Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I'm um, Mike Hurlston. I'm the president and CEO of Synaptics Company. And we're super happy to have you here today to our tech day. Uh, I think you had a good chance to walk around a bunch of the demos. And it's, it's a great day for our employees. It's a precursor to our CES show. But it's, it's pretty exciting. We've got a lot of good stuff to show. Yeah, you know, number one is around our docking station business. Uh, you and I just had an opportunity to have a quick discussion and docking station has become something that's really exciting for us. One, we're trying to bring wireless to the dock where we're eliminating the connection between the PC and the docking station itself. But then we're trying to extend that technology into monitors and we think we can actually bring a totally wireless desktop with wireless docking and wireless monitors. So that's one. Uh, the second area that we're super excited about is compute at the edge of a network. So as you know, a lot of compute today when you're running machine learning type algorithms, the compute is happening in a data center. You've got a transmission back and forth between the device itself and the data center to do any kind of heavy lifting on, on a machine learning model. We now have a solution where you can do and run the machine learning on the, the chip itself, which has significant advantages in terms of privacy, latency, and power. And now the compute is happening on device rather than in the data center. And we're really, really excited about that trend. A bunch of use cases that you saw here today in terms of presence detection, channeling audio to a particular user, fall detection for elder care and things like that. The last area that I think is, is exciting for us is just the whole wireless ecosystem uh, where more and more devices are becoming wirelessly enabled and we've got a family of products that's coming off the line that in, incorporate multiple wireless standards on a single chip. You've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Thread and in one, one chip. And then we've obviously got offerings for GPS so we think we can use that as the glue across multiple synaptics technologies to create platform solutions. And you and I were talking about it before we went on camera. Uh, platform is kind of the way we see our business evolving where we're selling multiple devices into a consumer platform rather than trying to be point products in a, in, in, at the end of the day. Yeah, Mark, I mean, look, we were lucky enough to have you here for a number of years, and actually you were the forerunner for one of our most important products that actually exemplifies just what you were talking about, which is the PC touchpad. Um, in our PC touchpad business, there are multiple layers to the solution. For one, we don't sell just a chip, as you know. We sell a PC board, and then we, in many cases, we sell an entire sub-assembly so that the PC OEM can buy a turnkey solution that has actually been wrung out, right? There's a lot of issues that with that. There's a lot of sensitivity. Each size board has its own characteristics. Each material, if you want to have a touchpad made of a different material, has its own characteristics. And we have to tweak those out in order to deliver a complete solution to the PC OEM. So it's not just a chip that we can turn over and hand to a customer. We have to do a lot of the work to put that into a subsystem. And it's not just the PC touchpad, which again, you were sort of the forerunner on. It's many of our businesses, display drivers, touch products for the phones. Um, you had the opportunity to go and see some of our newest devices that go into uh, VR glasses. All of these things require quite a bit of hand-holding and tuning as you put them into a display. Each display has different characteristics and we try to ring the chip out, marrying it to a given display, uh, different performance characteristics. So there's a lot more, as you, as you indicated in your question, to a Synaptics chip than maybe to, to many of our competitors.
Yeah, I just, you know, obviously we're really looking forward to CES, Mark. Hopefully we'll see you there. Um, it's it's going to be good. Last year was uh, a kind of a hit and miss show. A few people showed up. A lot of people didn't. Uh, we ended up having a very, very small presence there. But we're looking forward to having all of this. And uh, you were lucky enough to take a tour. We have roughly 20 demos here today. A lot of those are going to be moved to CES in January. and. We hope to see everybody there and have as many of you come by at a booth as, as physically possible. Hi, I'm Siddharth Chandrasekhar. I run the uh, marketing team from the Edge SOC division within multimedia of Synaptics. We make uh, SOC processes that go into both retail and operator products. And what we're showcasing here is a multiple different products that it goes into. The key differentiation in our products is the fact that we, in addition to high, high performance CPU, GPU, we have high performance NPU, a neural processing network, which allows you to run very complex AI on the edge. It also has an integrated ISP, ability for HDMI input, etc. So the demo we're showing here is actually a the device on top of the TV is a set-top box being launched by Deutsche Telekom in Germany. It is a set-top box with an integrated camera. And as you can see, it's trying to smart frame uh, based on, because if you're doing a video call on your phone, it's going to just look at you. But if you're doing it on your TV, it wants to try to understand, is it just me in front of the phone focus, uh, in front of the TV focus on me? But if it's the wife and kids running around, pan out and get the whole thing. So using both vision and source of sound to do the smart framing. In addition to this, it can support a co-watching kind of feature. You and a buddy in their own home can watch a movie or a sports game simultaneously while having a video call on the, on the TV, as well as motion-based entertainment. Think the Kinect or Dance Dance Revolution, these kind of games, but without a controller, just using the AI completely on the edge to track your body pose estimation and gestures. This can be complex games or simple games like Peppa Pig, where they're telling the story and Peppa Pig says, oh, let's go wash the car. And then you do like this and you'll see the car actually being washed on the TV. Um, the same SOC goes into other form factors. You can see next to under the TV is a big sound bar. Uh, the sound bar is something launched by LG U Plus, one of the largest operators in Korea. You go in and sign up for TV service. Uh, they'll give you a standard set-top box. You pay $2 more a month. They give you a 5.2.1 uh, soundbar based on JBL or Bang & Olufsen. This, and, uh, this, allows, this, this also still has HDMI input, so you can use your game controller. But if you set a reminder the game's about to start at 7 o'clock, it'll still tell you that it's time to try to switch back to the game. Then finally, we have a projector. Uh, this is a 4K projector, also with a camera built in. Normally with a projector, you need to try to adjust and get it to focus on the wall based on the distance, the corners. This is using AI and the camera to auto-focus it so you never have to press a button and it'll focus it exactly how it needs to be. Hello, Mark. My name is Jeff Lukant and I'm Vice President of Marketing and applications for our video interface business. We got a couple things to show you here today. First off is our wireless uh, dock. So traditionally, a, a, um, a notebook will be connected to a dock via a USB-C cable. In this case, it's all wireless. So this laptop is transmitting two 4K 60 Hertz images to these displays. It's received in the dock and being decoded and displayed. Also, the USB data from the keyboard and mouse, for example, would be is sent back across uh, the link to the uh, laptop, so it's wireless USB as well. Um, the reason this works is uh, the display link compression technology. It looks at the pixels that are changing versus the pixels that don't. The pixels that only the pixels that are changing get percent uh, as they're updated and they're compressed at a, a compression rate. It's an adaptive codec that reduces the amount of bandwidth, so it only consumes up to 200 megabits per second of link bandwidth. And it also recognizes text versus uh, video, so it's, it's content aware. So that's our video docking solution. Okay. Next, over here is our um, display link uh, new, new docking product. It supports four 4K 120 hertz displays. 
Our universal docking uses a display link driver, and it's ideal if you have a mixed mode environment with, uh, with, with Windows PCs, as well as uh, Apple uh, Macs, as well as uh, Google Chromecast. So any type of device uh, can be used for this universal docking solution. And um, it, it's, no, it's not limited by the number of streams that, uh, for example, an Intel GPU supports. Pretty much any laptop can, can display uh, four displays using this type of technology that we have here. Okay, and then lastly, um, over here is our DisplayPort solution. So this, uh, most of the DisplayPort products currently are DisplayPort 1.4. This upgrades to DisplayPort 2.0, or 2.1 if you would, and it goes from, instead of eight, eight gigabits per second, 30s, so it goes to a 20 gig. So it's phenomenally higher uh, video rate, and this type of product supports four outputs. Again, four, four 4Ks, a couple 8Ks, and we believe this technology is uh, will be relevant over the next five years. All the new CPUs and GPUs are being upgraded to this DisplayPort 2.0 technology. Thank you. Hello, hey, my name is Alex Chow. I'm going to represent Synaptics Wireless Connectivity PU to demonstrate our latest technology and the product. Okay, so today we have a three demo here. We are introduced two new program, new product called 438281. Both are triple combo. What, what is triple combo? That is a Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, plus Meter. So Meter is on top of AO2.15.4 technology, right? The, uh, and uh, UCG is uh, to be able to seamlessly uh, get all the product working together. For example, Google, Apple, or Amazon, right? The people with this uh, Meta certification device will be powered up, will be detected, will be seamlessly set up, working together. Okay, so let's move to this uh, first station. So uh, two product, right? I talk about 4382. 82 is a so-called RSDB. You can think about single device you have a two wi-fi inside two by two plus one by one so this demo show you we will have uh, this 2.4 gigahertz for range right single this single chip device and uh, one wi-fi connect to the ap router the other one by one will be shared by all these three video together so you can see right these three video all shared by five gigahertz or six gigahertz link by right, this link will give you 500 megabit per second sell among all the video now but this will be a perfect solution for some bar so some bar you have adding two by two the downlink one by one can be shared by seven stereo speaker all together with uh, uh, low latency right with all the uh, you know good problems we can deliver second demo is the latest new so-called LE audio so as you know the classic Bluetooth is one to one, right? One people connect, the other people cannot connect anymore. So LE audio have a three key features. One, low latency. Second, low power. Third, you can do the broadcasting or group casting. So here, very interesting, you go to a sports event, usually you know there's a two capability. You have a English, you have a Spanish. With Bluetooth Classic, you can only connect to one. But here, our demonstration one set of speaker will display the English, the other set of speaker will display, right, will play the, uh, you know, Spanish language, right, so this LE audio will be new, right, in the coming year you will see many new products introduced with LE audio. We are the solution with, uh, uh, you know, hardware, software ready, okay? The third one, if you move a little bit here, this is the triple combo. You can see we have a Wi-Fi running, we have a Bluetooth running, and we have uh, this three GB running. This is the meter fundamental underneath technology. So meter will be sit on the top and uh, use this three to communicate among different home appliance, security, OTT setup box, etc. Right, everything hook up together seamlessly. Right, this will be the way to enable, uh, you know, for the for the central control new units as a smart display, smart speaker. Right, hook up as a same, you know, the unit, right, control all the things together. So hopefully, right, triple combo, one by one, hopefully this gives you an idea uh, what these two new devices can be, can be done, okay? Can, can, you know, kind of benefit you. That's it for my <laughs> demo.
Hi, I'm John Brady. I do automotive marketing here at Synaptix. I want to show you some of our products. This is automotive TDDI. So TDDI is touch and display driver integration. So this is a Lucid Air automotive. This is the dashboard from it. These two displays here have touch and display working on them with Synaptix TDDI. Some of the benefits that we have from TDDI is that this particular one in a normal display it's a rectangular shape. These ones are freeform, so you can see it's not a rectangular, but it has part of it's clipped off here to make an industrial design. The Synaptics chips make sure that the display does not get distorted, the video here, as well as the touch works well on these icons at the edges. Another part of this, this is a curved display, so it actually has a radius, so it looks a nice cockpit for the driver. Our chip is made to go on this glass, and it adheres to it, and yet it won't break over the, the lifetime of the vehicle. So this is a TDDI, and this is going to be about 50% of the market in 2025, going up to almost all cars by the end of the decade. So something else that we're working on is called local dimming. Local dimming is a way to modify the image of the, of the video coming in. So this, this display here, and many displays today are edge lit, meaning the LEDs are at the side, and the way to get the light is a backlight and it shines through. So to make this white, this is all illuminated. As a result, what can happen, instead of the blacks being black, they can be sort of washed out. A way of addressing this is you put LEDs in an array on the backlight and you're able to make the blacks black and the whites bright by turning the LEDs on or off or even gray in an intermediate value. In this technology, we're, providing, we're putting it into a chip that'll be available early next year. And here's a demo of it working. This is done on an FPGA, so it has the logic of the, that's going to be inside the chip. This is Synaptics technology, and this is the Apple iPad Pro. They both have local dimming. The, comp the performance is very comparable. The blacks are very black, and the whites are very bright. But this is done with only one quarter of the number of zones. So this has only 400 LEDs in it. This has 10,000 LEDs in 2,500 zones. So 2,500 zones versus 400 zones. That's significant savings in LEDs and for LED drivers. So it's about a quarter of the cost to do this technology versus this for this one for almost equivalent performance. So that, this is a chip that's available next year. Thank you for your time.